right, so we are out here fishing in Alabama now, and we're looking for a lot of bed fish, but the thing that we are come across the most often on this lake as far as cover goes is boat docks. So in between the boat docks where the bass are spawning a lot, but they guard fry and everything around the boat docks. They stage, pre-spawn, post-spawn under them docks. So we've been skipping a ton of docks today. So I'm going to sit down and show y'all exactly what I do to skip docks. I made this video before. The audio didn't turn out exactly how I wanted to, so I want to do it again with a little bit better audio and hopefully have some more good cast. Maybe we can get Miss Hunter in there for a second. So first thing I'm going to do is got these power poles. Hopefully they grab us while we're sliding. And then I just like to take any type of, I like cross style baits. You can use, you know, anything you want to use pretty much from a swim bait to cross style bait to a trunk, anything. But y'all see me use this one the most. It's a little Zoom Ultraviolet Speed Crawl. The best thing about this is it has a thick body relative to the amount of drag that it produces. So skips really, really well. I, I just bite off a little bit of it on almost every single jig. Sometimes I'll leave it full if I want a really big jig for flipping or something like that, but I pretty much bite off a three quarters of an inch of it almost every single time. Another thing that I always do, I don't care how good your hook keeper is, I always put just a small little drop of super glue and not much at all, just a small little drop, slide it up over the hook keeper and that'll just hold it for the entirety of that trailer until that trailer you know, loses its legs, that thing is going to hold it. So that's what, how I rig my jigs up. I do, one thing I do like to do is thin the skirt out just a little. If you have too bulky of a skirt or any, or like a rubber skirt or a rubber skirt or anything like that, a lot of times it's really, really difficult to skip. So I will cut the skirt down and thin it out just a little. This one I've been skipping it with all day. So this one's kind of scraggly to begin with, but just a regular green pumpkin jig. Everything's ready to roll. Let's get up there. Well, first thing, I want to show you is the rod and reel that I use. So I always use a seven foot three for almost everything except for cranking and spinning rods and some stuff like that. But this one right here is a seven foot three heavy, fast. This reel is a Shimano Cronarch MGL from Summerlin Outdoors, and it is a 8.2 to 1 gear ratio, 150 size reel. I like Shimano's for one simple reason. I like centrifugal brakes and not magnetic brakes. I do not own a single reel with magnetic brakes. They're just not for me. So I'll show you how I now this thing is set right now. I don't even know how it is. These reels are kind of foreign to me, but I'll show you exactly how I've got this one set on the inside. So right now I have three brakes on and one brake off. So typically I like to have two and two, but one on for this one feels good. So it doesn't have much resistance at all. I loosen the spool up until the spool barely, barely shakes. And then I take this cast control. This is the spool tension knob. Basically that adds tension to your spool if you tighten it down. So I loosen it up to where the, the spool shakes and then tighten it down just to where the spool stops shaking. And that's exactly how I have this reel set for skipping. The side dial is on three if you have the same exact reel. So let's get up here and show you the, the technicality of the, you know, the physical part of how I skip. So pop up here. So the number one thing for skipping is you want to have an uh, open mind, have a clear mind. Don't want to be worrying about hitting the console, hitting the trolling motor. Boat position is one of the most important things for skipping that people take for granted. So I always want to make sure I'm coasting towards the dock like I am right here with this dock behind me over my left shoulder. I want to make sure I'm coasting to this dock where I have plenty of room to skip and you know get a good skip out of the rod without being scared of hitting the rod or hitting the bait on anything around me. So I you know, I always like to be coasting towards the dock in a completely open position. I don't like to be in a bind or anything like that. And I like to strategically skip the dock on whichever part I'm going to get to first. So if I'm coming at the dock from the main lake, I'm going to skip the deepest part and then skip towards the bank. Whichever way I'm coming towards the dock, whatever part I'm going to get to first is the part that I skip under first because I don't want to get too close with the boat and blow the dock out. So let's get up here and skip under this dock. Okay, so as far as the actual technical part, I like to leave a little bit of slack on the rod, probably about this much. It just helps me generate more momentum. And I keep the rod about this high off the water, and I make a circle with the bait and have the bait lower to the water than the rod. And when it comes off right here, I let it go, and I feather my rod tip up after it hits the water. I feather my rod tip up and kind of hold the bait higher in the water column, helps me get a little bit further of a skip out of it. So I like to hold that bait just on the surface and let it keep skipping. I do that by holding my rod tip high. So I'll show you it in full speed right here. Okay, so as you can see, I reared the rod back, kept the bait low. The rod's not really as low as I originally thought I did. Hold on. Oh man, 
Oh. You see my line running? Man, I had them when I pretty much shook it off. So now that I know there's a fish under there, it's even harder to skip under it. Come on, bite one more time. I should have checked up. I should have just busted. One thing that you have to learn, first thing you gotta do is just master one way of skipping. So if you, your way of skipping is just gonna be your right handed like that, that's fine. But eventually you need to be able to get where you can backhand it, you can, you know, pitch skip and everything. So like I'm back here, I just got that bite on the back side of that dock over there and I'm drifting on this side. So what I would wanna do is step to the front and do a backhanded roll cast and then skip under the dock from the, from the front side. So all I do, I still keep my right hand on the reel. I don't skip left-handed, and I put my left hand on the bottom, just like I would cast this way, and I just backhand it under there. Right to where that fish just bit. So these docks are kind of hard to get to, and it's not so much that it's hard to get to every place on the dock, but if I skip from this side to that dock, I'm, I gotta go around with like three poles. From right here, I'm in the middle of two poles. So when I set the hook on the fish, he's gonna be out of the cover faster. So that's the main thing as far as skipping these docks is you want to get your bait to where there's a, uh, you know, you can see a pathway to get the fish out. So you don't get hung and lose them quite as often. So that's the biggest deal with skipping with different angles. Cause you can get two places you can't get, but the biggest thing is you can get to the places easier and then get the fish out a little easier. So a big thing on skipping is angles. You always want to be patient and wait for the right cast to materialize. Kind of like being a good running back. You want to wait for people to block. You want to wait for lanes to open up. That's kind of how it is with fishing. So on this dock right here, it's a floating dock. There's very straight, small, narrow openings. And if you try to skip before you're directly in front of it, you, there's just there's no way to skip all to the end of the dock. So I've already drifted past it a little, but I'm going to back up, be at the right angle, and then skip under this floating dock. These are the docks that pre-spawn, post-spawn, shallow, or deep. These floating docks hold fish. They grow a lot of algae. A lot of bait bait eats the algae off the bottom of the floats. And then the fish suspend under them. So let's let this right angle open up and skip on under there. The one thing I target with these floating docks more than anything else is the deepest shade. And as you can see, under the back float on this dock is the darkest shade. So I'm going to skip right in front of the back float. All right, so that's a very general breakdown of what I use to skip with. So basically, the trailer you want to use is just one with a very thick body compared to how much drag it, it puts across the water. Seven foot three, medium heavy or heavy point blank rod. Fast, very fast gear ratio reel. And then I always, I'm, I personally always skip a half ounce jig. You can use whatever you prefer, but I like a half ounce jig. Just helps me go a little faster, helps me skip a little further under the dock. So 20 pound line, 90% of the time, I will drop down to 18 or 16, but most of the time 20 pound line. And that's it, that's how you just go, put your time in on the boat docks. You'll pick it up, it's not that hard. It may look a little hard, but it's not that hard. I will see y'all in the next video. Appreciate you watching. Hit that subscribe button because I'm on my home pond fishing a tournament tomorrow. So go ahead and subscribe.